Hey folks, I'm Jack Fawcett and welcome to this new series of videos I'm doing called My Guitars where I'm going to share with you my guitars and their stories and their names and, and some kind of interesting things about them. I've gotten a lot of interest from people over my guitars. I, I do name them. Yeah, um, I'm not a collector. Kind of on the edge of being a collector. I'm not a collector. I love guitars. I, I get them as a player, but I love guitars and you know I'm, I'm very very into guitars and the different sounds that they make and vintage vibes and you know guitar players tones you name it and many of them have been with me for a very long time some of them are newer and you know have a lot of stories have a lot of um, you know experience being out on the road with them playing gigs with them doing recordings with them I want to share with you my brand new guitar to start off with which is a little bit backwards but I thought this would be kind of a fun way to kick it off this is Mary Mary is a, a brand new guitar for me well not not brand new um, you know, used because I, I get most of my guitars used uh, and this was uh, very very special because this is a, a gift from my wife for our 10th anniversary and we decided for our 10th anniversary our original plan was to go to Paris together um, and it turns out we have four daughters so going to Paris with four little kids is a little bit trickier than we anticipated so we decided to you know kind of do some some really nice gifts for each other instead I got her a new diamond ring and a Le Crusette Dutch oven because we love to cook together uh, she loves to cook I love to cook and uh, and she got me this absolutely stunning 2017 Gibson ES345. It's a 1964 reissue in seafoam green. I named it Mary. We're Catholic, and, and Mary has a very special place for my wife and I, and it seemed like an appropriate name, particularly because my ES335, which is around here someplace over here, is Joseph. And I thought, hey, that's kind of, that, that's fitting. So, so now there's Mary and Joseph for guitars. Gibson only made this type of guitar for a few years um, in, in these different finishes. They also had a Pelham Blue one, the seafoam green, which is just stunning. I usually like Pelham Blue, but this is, uh, the, the seafoam green looks way better on this model, I think, you know, new, the cream binding and everything. Gibson only made this guitar for a few years. The originals were in the Gibson Memphis line, and then that closed, and then the Gibson branch picked it up for a little while. They don't make them anymore. If anyone from Gibson is watching this, you absolutely need to bring this guitar back. I don't say this at all lightly. Many of you know I have quite a collection of Gibson guitars. This is easily the best Gibson I've ever owned. It just sounds perfect. It sounds beautiful. The neck feels fantastic. It's kind of a thick C-shaped neck, but with a nice wide fingerboard. It's one of the most comfortable necks I've ever played. I like bigger necks. This is, uh, no, so this is cool. It's not a stereo version because the 345 originally would, would have been stereo. <sighs> Who cares? I'm not going to play it in stereo, and I think nor did any of the players who got it at the time. It, you know, it's one of those concepts that never really took off. The original 335, uh, 345s, excuse me, would have been stereo and had multiple outputs. This does have the veritone switch, which I think is really cool. I the, There seems to be quite a debate online about veritone switches and whether or not they're, they're cool or not. This has the veritone switch. I think it's awesome. The veritone switch basically filters out certain mid-range frequencies on uh, different settings. Number three, is like instant BB King, which is just awesome. I think it's a really cool switch. I, I, I think, and I find it very, very usable. I don't really get down into these because then you, you get a pretty big scoop with some volume loss, but you can actually do it for some cool, um, you, you know, if you get down into like three and four and then you crank it back up to one, you could actually use that for a boost in a way because you do lose some volume with it. So you could, uh, you know, you could get kind of a pluckier, almost out of phase ish type sound. It's, uh, and then crank it back up to normal. And, and that could be really cool dynamically. Funny enough, I had a dream about one of these guitars. Anyone else dream about guitars? I know you do. Don't shame me for that. 10 years ago or so, I had a dream that I got a Seafoam Green ES Gibson, which they didn't make at the time. Then they came out with this one and it was like, oh, I want that. It was like the guitar that I dreamt about. It's amazing. But we couldn't afford one at the time. And, and so then, you know, this is again for our 10th anniversary. This is just really special. It has nylon saddles for an extra cool vintage vibe, parallelogram inlays. So this is one of those that's kind of instantly become a special guitar, even though I haven't done a whole lot with it yet. You know, I've, uh, you're hearing it in the video. I'm going to go through the Veritone switch a little bit so that you can hear that kind of dynamically and, and what it does. And then at the end, we're going to switch over to the bridge pickup and crank on the overdrive. And for that, I'm playing my full tone plimsoll, which was a gift from my wife for our second anniversary. So that's kind of cool. And I, I thought that would be a really, really really 
sort of nice fitting thing. Playing into one of my very, very favorite amps. I love this amp. This is my Marshall JTM45 Bluesbreaker combo, which is loaded with Eminence Al Nico speakers. It has an Alessandro on one side and it has a Red Fang on the other side. This is also the maiden voyage of the Alessandro. I actually just installed that this morning. I got that from Eminence and uh, that's a that's a new speaker. It's a 40 watt Al Nico speaker. I really like the sound of Al Nico speakers, particularly in British style amp. Actually, no, I like Al Nico speakers in all style amps. My Fender Bassman and my Super Reverb, they all have Al Nico speakers in them. The Bassman has old Al Nico uh, they're blue backs. It's not blues like you'd find in an AC30. They're these kind of unmarked blue ones. And then the the Super has um, Alnico Jensen's. And Alnico speakers just have such a warmth and a compression, but without getting too squishy. It, it retains really nice clarity. But I find that there's, you know, it almost kind of gives it a rounder sound instead of that harsh edginess like you can get with ceramic speakers. So anyway, that's the maiden voyage of the Alessandro speaker in the Marshall Blues Breaker. Stay tuned for more of these videos, guys. I'm gonna share with you all the guitars that I have. I'm gonna go th one through another. Uh, many of them have a lot of stories. They've been with me for a long time and, uh, you know, been on, again, been on the road with me and, and been places and gigs, some, some great experiences with them. And some of them have been with me through awful experiences. And that's, uh, you know, that's one of the great things about guitar is they, they're kind of like a friend or a companion. Um, and they, they, if you, you dedicate time to playing them and staying with them, they dedicate themselves to you. Thanks for watching. Stick around for the rest of the tones and we'll see you next time.